I'm here with a legend. Yes. A star legend. The star of stars. <laughs> Tell us, Neil, about Star Talk. Star Talk. Oh, well, it's, I, eight years ago, we started a radio show that was broadcast on terrestrial radio. Do people even remember what terrestrial radio is? That's what you get when you tune in your car radio. Yes. And it's terrestrial <laughs> radio. Um, and we started with a grant from the National Science Foundation. We thought we'd be able to create a science-based talk show that could be commercially uh, viable. And, but, of course, no sponsors believe that when you first tell them. So you need grant money. So we spent several years building the brand, building the, the rhythms and, the, and, and, you know, what, and what, what it is that we defined ourselves to be. And then a few years ago, we jumped species. And so, so it went from terrestrial radio to satellite radio, then to podcast, then to television. And so we became the first ever science-based talk show, nighttime, you know, like evening talk show, first ever. We didn't, that wasn't our intent. It just turned out that way. And so what we do is we combine pop culture, mm -hmm. comedy, and celebrity, all, and science, mm -hmm. all in one. We, we, and we, we stitch this tapestry with all of those factors. And uh, we're very, we're proud of the result. So generally, I, I'm the host of yeah. this show, and we bring in someone hewn from pop culture. Right. Generally, you would have heard of them, generally. And so you come for the celebrity, but you stay for the science, because <laughs> my conversation with them then finds all the ways that science has touched their lives. Right. Science or technology or uh, math or any, any of the, the STEM fields that we know of, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, the guest will reveal a, a sensitive geek underbelly mm -hmm. that you never knew they had. And so we're a geek safe space on that show. So if, <laughs> if your favorite music performer happens to have memorized a few digits of pi, we're going to find out about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or anything. I mean, or if they were a science fiction buff or, uh, you know, last year we had Whoopi Goldberg on. And you said, well, why would you have her? Well, should I remind you, she was a recurring character in Star Trek The Next Generation. Yes. And she's a huge science fiction buff, and she wants to be a superhero herself or have a superhero based on her. Mm -hmm. And so she said, <laughs> I remember what she said. She said, I want to have a superhero who's got, like, chest hanging down like mine is so that you can line up all the criminals and just slap them across the face. <laughs> <laughs> so what, where, what other show would you hear that as an answer? Nowhere. To nowhere. Also, that's like a breastplate usually is to protect you. She's going to take that She's off gonna and take use over it. Exactly, I love it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, of course, the... Uh, I also, in studio, we have a, my co-host is always a professional stand-up comedian. And we will also, if the topic needs it, which is often, we'll bring in an academic professional in that subject. It could be a psychologist. It could be a, a technologist. It could be a, uh, a sports scientist. Sometimes we interview sports, right. uh, sports stars. So it's, it's a celebration of all the ways science reveals itself in our lives and especially in our culture. And it does actually, um, there's so much tech and science in our own everyday life now. Everybody's using science and it behooves you to understand how it works. Not, not only is- <laughs> It's in your pocket. Right, right. Not only is everyone using science, you're using it even when you don't know that you're using it. And that's, that's the real joy of doing this show. When don't I know I'm using it? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how about the fact that um, this was several decades ago? We figured out how to make very powerful magnets. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I grew up, magnets were, you know, there was still a curiosity. We had those big horseshoe magnets. You could easily just pull yeah, the yeah. thing off, okay? We managed to make very powerful, inexpensive magnets. So when you have a powerful magnet, it means you can make it small and still be powerful. All speakers and microphones use magnets. If you can make a small magnet, you can make a small speaker. If you have a small magnet, you can make a small microphone. 
And that's how you can get tiny microphones pinned on a shirt. It's how you can have earbuds. It's how I didn't grow up with earbuds. We had big old headphones with the boom box and the this and the that. Everything was big because science had not fully touched that enterprise. It's how we can have hearing aids that live inside your ear canal. Go back 100 years. You know what a hearing aid was? It was a big funnel. Cone. 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 <laughs> yeah. oh, did you say something? Oh, here. <laughs> Look in the audience. The hard of hearing people would be sliding a cone back and forth. So that is one of the more subtle but interesting ways that advances in one field, magnets, manifest in technology, changing consumer electronics. I'm just saying. You asked me. I did. And I'm telling you. There it is. <laughs> I love that you had an answer. I knew that you would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why I asked. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and of course, uh, the IT revolution, is right. un, that would not exist without the discovery of quantum physics back in the 1920s. It, it's a weird thing. The atom, you can't even see the atom. Molecules, I know they're molecules, but why do I have to know how they behave? Because I'm a macroscopic object. I am not microscopic, mm -hmm. so I don't even have to care. Some people care. Right. The physicists of the day. They discover an entire branch of physics called quantum mechanics, we call it. Curiosity, particles pop in and out of existence. There, there's weird stuff going on. We would ultimately learn how to exploit that weirdness for our own gain, our own, our own nefarious gain. <laughs> so what came out of this was basically the IT revolution. And by some estimates... One third of the world's GDP is traceable to the creation, storage, and retrieval of digital information. So, so there are people now born into it who are not thinking that as some kind of a discovery because it's the world that they've always known. Mm -hmm. I think of it as a discovery because I saw it come. I saw it, well, I didn't see it invented, but I know what you not mean. that old. <laughs> but I, I saw it get applied to to technology and how that technology then served civilization. So what I hope is that the generation born into the iPhone or the smartphone in general, that they don't become complacent. Because the iPhone tells them where grandma's house is, when to make a left and how yes. to, where, where the cupcake shop is, right? And this is like satellites and cell phone towers and microwave transmitters and very strong magnets that make a speaker and mm -hmm. that make a speaker this big and a microphone that right. big. And so, so, so I hope they don't get complacent. I want them to invent the next thing yeah, for their next generation to then be impressed with their ingenuity. That's uh, because without it, we all will just ossify right. in, 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 we, we become complacent. Because I'm good. I got, I got my entertainment and I got this and I got my, my Snapchat and everything. I'm good. I also wonder, too, though, if some of that instant information mm -hmm. stops people from really studying and learning things or gathering information from other people. What do you think about that? That's a great That's question. That's concerns me. I don't know. Yeah, so I try not to be concerned by things that are different. Right. I just observe them. Mm -hmm. Because if you go back far enough in time, this writing... This newfangled invention called writing. Yeah. That's going to be the end of memory. No. You're going to have to, <laughs> you won't have to remember anything. Is that what people thought? Yes. Crazy. Well, it's crazy because yes. you came after the fact. Right. But in the day, if you're one of these people scared of technology, you'd worry that somehow the life that you knew and valued and appreciated and, and, and cherished would somehow become dismantled or dismantled or compromised. So that's why I, I never judge something that's new. I just observe it. Mm -hmm. And so, so wait, wait, so the question was about the, the question is about instant answers oh, instant answer, right, than you. really digging in gotcha, and studying gotcha. something. So, so I happen to think mm -hmm. that uh, reflecting on information is the source. Uh, well, you start with data. Mm -hmm. Data alone, who knows what it means? You have to analyze it. You analyze data, and data then becomes information. But then you want to reflect on information further, and then information becomes 
ideas and deeply thought ideas can lead to wisdom. And then you distill all of this and then collectively you might just call it insight into how things are and why. And I think you need, you got to occupy a little bit, you put a little bit of yourself in each one of these levels. Yeah. Otherwise, you could be lost in data. You could be, or if you don't, if you don't base it on data and you have ideas, then your ideas are just floating away. They have no anchor, right? right? So I think all of us, if we had some balance of these elements, uh, I think we're in a position to move society forward rather than be consumed or lost in the maelstrom of data that's out there. Right. So maybe one day we'll just invent AI and AI will do all of our thinking. Oh, maybe. <laughs> but I'm not going to judge that. I'm just going to observe it. <laughs> well, exactly. I'm not judging the AI. <laughs> AI is coming down the, down it the pipe. It's here. It's coming so. down. It's there. It'll, it'll just, it'll, it just is. It is. Yeah. Well, I could talk to you all day, but they told me that I have to stop. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, we had to cut the whole universe but in eight minutes. it was a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Well, thanks. Thanks for Thank having you. me. you. have a, a 10 and a 12-year-old kid? Yeah. Yeah, so don't mess it up. I won't. That, Pro maybe. I, I, I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Give them freedoms at home. Yes. That would be the expressions of their childhood curiosity. You don't want to be the one who spent the first years of their life teaching them to walk and talk. Right. And then spending the rest of their lives telling them to shut up and sit down. That is true. You want them to explore. Yes. And to, uh, even if ex exploration might, uh, if they could trip on something, if they could stub their knee, okay, skin their knee, stub their toe, there's a lesson in physics there. <laughs> yes. Better to learn, sometimes kids only learn through a mistake. Some people I just think learn the best, better. The best things you learn are through yeah. mistakes. Even things that are not mistakes. You're walking with them down the street, and there's a big mud puddle there. Yeah. What does the kid want to do? Jump. With both feet into <laughs> the mud puddle. And you oh. say, no, don't do that because the clothing will get dirty. Of course. The, did, you, did you have kids so that you would never have a messy home? No, <laughs> no. You, this is the entropy of yep. childhood. Yep. The disorder that <laughs> surrounds them. And... Most of what creates the disorder is some childhood bit of exploration. I would like to call it a science experiment that they're doing. Yes. That you're going to thwart because it's somehow disrupting your life. Well, you birth them. Give them the free range. We should have free range children. I 100% agree. If they pull the pots and pans out of the drawer, start hitting them with the wooden spoons, you're going to say, stop making all that record. <laughs> These are experiments in acoustics that you have thwarted just because you don't want to hear the noise. But you birthed them, I presume. I did. Okay, so it's so get over it. It's why I have Legos all over the floor from a child who makes machines that They're, you put a quarter in and a piece of candy comes out. You For can real. build a Lego machine that takes money? Yes, that lets candy come out of different colors. He's figured out you, how to do it. You can put Lego blocks together that you can put money in it? Yes, and it triggers something and the candy comes out. I got uh, Legos everywhere. No, there's an entrepreneur <laughs> for you. Right. Don't okay. Science. Yeah. He likes a STEM, too. <laughs> Thank well, you so okay. much. Well, okay. So thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.